Hi, I'm Ajdev, CEO and co-founder of RGI. So in this video, we'll cover Cursor in 10 minutes. We'll cover four parts. A, uh, what is Cursor? Uh, second, how you could uh, do the setup of Cursor. Uh, and third, uh, we'll cover some basic um, use case pattern. And finally, we'll cover five tips that will help you use Cursor like a pro. So Cursor is a new age AI editor. And it's pretty uh, helpful. I've been using it for the past couple of months. Um, it makes it really easy to use AI in your coding workflow. Uh, and that's why it's getting a lot of uh, love uh, out there in the internet. So how do you install Cursor? Um, so to install Cursor, uh, that is a part one of this video, uh, you have to go to the Cursor website and just download, uh, install is free. They have a pretty generous free tier version, which I was using for a long time and just recently switched to pro version. So once you install Cursor, there are a couple of things that uh, you should keep in mind uh, that to make it um, more helpful for you. The first one that I'll say that a lot of pattern here is very similar to VS Code. It's a fork of VS Code, so that's why. Uh, so for example, here on the left hand side uh, you get uh, the file structure like you get in the vs code uh, you can search here uh, the get uh, staged files and all very similar here again to the vs code uh, and then you can use extension which i have not been using much and then uh, once uh, this is very familiar there's something that i want you to make no take notice of for example the setting for cursor here so make sure that you go through it when you install uh, for example cursor tab do you want to enable or uh, auto complete and all so this is more or less you will just want to enable it i think code indexing part uh, is pretty helpful uh, I do want it to index and help me answer question about the whole code context. Uh, I don't, um, and you can also ignore certain files, like if there are sensitive files and all that you don't want AI to see, um, uh, you can do that. I have not enabled it. Uh, one thing uh, that to note here is that I don't find it much helpful. Uh, it does, uh, in some cases, uh, get the whole code base context, but not all the time. So you, do, uh, I'll cover the case uh, on how you could use it more effectively. Uh, then there are some other uh, normal tips here. Uh, then there are some features in beta that you might want to uh, use, uh, for example, long context models. So like OpenAI, Anthropic has 200,000 uh, tokens window. So you, if you enable, you can use it and review. I have not found it extremely useful, but review uh, also works and uh, could be used. And then uh, one other thing that I wanted to um, cover is Composer. Make sure that enable. It's pretty uh, interesting feature we'll walk through uh, in this video. So that is on the setup. Now, a lot of the other things works very similar to the VS Code. So this we will just cut down. For example, command shift P uh, takes you to the uh, command prompt here. And for example, you can install a uh, cursor. Um, so if you do this, uh, what makes it really nice is that, for example, in your folder, uh, from your folder, you can just do cursor dot and open this uh, editor, uh, similar to how you do code dot. So that's the basic of a cursor setup. Uh, I hope you find it straightforward. Let me know in comments if you have any doubts. I can, I'm happy to help you out. Uh, next, we'll cover uh, three features, uh, uh, simple feature and most helpful feature for Cursor. So the first one is autocomplete, um, and this works uh, very intuitively. So for example, when I'm writing a new uh, endpoint here, it just gives me a tab and I could complete and uh, just uh, keeps adding. And uh, so that is pretty helpful when you are writing command, maybe just go tab, 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 and then try to rewrite it. So that's one. And the second one is that whenever you go uh, highlight something, uh, it will uh, show edit icon. You can also uh, get to it from command K. And so one helpful feature here is that for small edits, you can just uh, type it here and ask a cursor to do it. For example, uh, improve uh, error handling in this case. So uh, it will process it and just give you inline edits. And uh, in order to accept, I can go change by change or I can just accept completely here. Um, so for small changes, this is pretty good. The third thing uh, that I use a lot is the chat feature here that uh, you can uh, do with a command shift, command L here. And uh, now there are a bunch of ways to use uh, this feature. One that you can just ask about the code base, understand this file. The the way in which I use it in coding workflow is to use it to make more complex changes. For example, uh, I added this file and I also add the current file, uh, which is app.fastfile and say that uh, define an uh, endpoint uh, that can do, uh, that can take audio input. Now for this, uh, it does need to look at the LLM code as well. So that's why adding two file uh, was helpful. So once I do that, it will take both of these into the context and then define uh, the complete change. Um, so this is much more robust. Um, and this was still very uh, sort of uh, small example, but in the com complex cases, you can add multiple file and ask it to do uh, multi-file edits and it will highlight you where exactly you do need to do the changes. So that's the three uh, sort of most used command. Uh, next we'll cover five tips on how you can use a uh, cursor uh, more better uh, like a pro. So tip number one is a lot of keyboard bindings are similar to VS Code, but some of the things that are uh, different here, for example, uh, command K that uh, you can use to uh, do the inline edits, and then command L uh, for the chat. Um, so if you keep this handy, remember it, I think this will uh, save a lot of keyboard, uh, sort of clicking around uh, for you. The second tip that I have for you is how, how to do the sort of real code edits. So for small code edits, just uh, use the uh, inline edits that we spoke about here, edit. For larger one, uh, you can use the chat icon here. 
The third thing would be that uh, in the chat itself, like uh, try uh, indexing, mentioning specific files so that you get a uh, high quality output. You can also uh, here uh, in, uh, do web search and all um, and add images. For example, if it's a UI, then you can just paste the UI uh, image here and ask it to uh, improve it. I have, for example, improved fonts and all uh, using that. The third thing that I do uh, is that uh, I just go and add a bunch of to-dos uh, in my file. For example, to do uh, improve uh, error handling, uh, then here I will say uh, to do uh, add audio processing. I'll say uh, to do uh, improve uh, the message. So once I do all of this, I can just go here and say please uh, complete the to do uh, I marked in the file. So in that case, I can ask it to do much more complex things. Uh, for example, if you have a workflow where you are processing files, uh, processing something and then taking an action, um, you could uh, just use your file instead of writing all of this in the prompt on the side. And this makes it much helpful. Very similar to how you uh, instruct someone in your team that you write a bunch of to-dos that, that makes it really easy for them to take up the task. And to apply this, you just have to uh, apply here. It finds the diff and then uh, takes it there uh, to do that. So tip number uh, four that I have for you is to use Composer. And that's what we started our video, video with. So, uh, so to use Composer, you have to do command shift I, and this takes you to the Composer screen. Uh, I'll just uh, remove this. And what it can do is can do multi-file edits. So it's good to write a boilerplate. Uh, so for example, I can take uh, this whole thing that um, I'm using RGI to do for autofix. I can just uh, paste all of these commands here and then uh, command shift enter and what we'll do is we'll figure out in the whole code base context, find uh, the files that could be um, helpful, and then try to do the edits in different files. It will also give you which uh, libraries to install likely uh, to uh, achieve your goal. So it may change this to three files, for example, here. Now, it will not always be right, and um, it does simplify a lot of things, but it's a good boilerplate to get started. In other videos, we'll also cover other tools that are pretty helpful uh, in doing this. So for example, it told me what changes I need to do in requirement.txt, uh, what all changes I need to do in different files. Um, so this is a good place to uh, get started um, in writing boilerplate, for example. Uh, the fifth uh, feature that I'll tell you, uh, talk about is a review feature. Uh, this is uh, in the beta today. Um, so what you could do is uh, ask it to review the working state uh, of a file. Uh, I have not been able to get much uh, input out of it, uh, but uh, this is again uh, something in beta and then would hopefully improve a lot. And in the later videos, we'll cover how to um, do reviews better. So in 10 minutes, we covered everything that is for you to get started with Cursor. Uh, in the next video, we'll cover AI for PR review. So for this video, if you have any feedback or if you want me to go deep on any particular idea, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much.